Tons Jim Cara, $189 one dynamic driver for balance armature IEM. Is this the IEM to put Tons Jim back on the IEM market? In today's video, we'll be reviewing this and comparing it to its competitors. Let's jump into it. Hey friends, Timmy, welcome back to my video on Giz Audio. And today we have a review of Tons Jim Cara, $189. Like I said, it comes in to replace the now quite old HANA 2021. Yes, two years is a long time in the IEM market. We only know Tons Gym for two IEMs mainly, the Oxygen and the HANA 2021. There is the Tanya DSP as well, but that's a little bit more new and it hasn't really catch on yet. Oxygen was super popular back when it was released, one of the best for its time. HANA 2021 is also still decent till today, a little bit outcompeted now, now that a lot of cheap IEMs are doing similar qualities for cheaper. And now we have the Cara coming in to replace the HANA 2021 kind of because it's priced the same. And Tons Gym is hoping this one will put their name back on the market. Did it do it? In my opinion, it kind of did. It kind of did with a little bit of caveat and we'll get into all of that right now, starting with the tuning. Tons Gym Cara's tuning is very, enjoyable. I would say 80% of people who buy the Cara will likely like the Cara. There's really nothing that's outright hateable. There's nothing that stands out to me as a red flag in this IEM. I also state this is my first impression as well. It has just a little bit for everyone. It has the base quantity, it has the treble air, it has a correct mid-range. So it has a lot of enjoyable elements. Where it falls a little bit short though is the quality of some of those elements are not quite on par with the competitors out there. For example, bass, you get the bass quantity. The bass is relatively clean as well, well controlled, so mid-range is not really affected, while at the same time you get a thumpy, fun level of mid-bass. The only downside to this bass is that it's not quite as dynamic. Feels a little blunt at time, not loose, but a little bit blunted, like hitting a pillow type of feeling. You get the quantity, you get the fun, but the quality of it leaves leaves more to be desired. The other quality that I think that Cara could have done better is in the treble. Yes, you get a lot of treble, especially in the air region. It is quite revealing as well, which is something I like. So you get a lot of information, but those informations kind of have blurry edges, if you will. So similar to the bass situation where you get the quantity, but the quality, the definition of those little notes are not quite well defined. Mid-range is where I say I have nothing bad to say about it. It is a very enjoyable, natural sounding mid-range and vocals sound great out of it. The only nitpick I have is in the timbre department. After 5k, there is a peak that you see on the graph at 8k. The peak there actually exists for me. It doesn't exist at 8k though. It exists around 6 to 7k once I checked it on tone generator and it does bring a little bit of artificial feeling to the overall timbre. All of that put together makes the Cara one of the easiest to like IEMs, but not the most easiest to love IEMs. Because again, though you get a lot of enjoyable elements and it's pleasing and easy to listen to, it doesn't really wow you. And because it doesn't wow you, it doesn't really compete with any IEMs above $250. I would say Performer 5 is a hard gatekeeper for the car here. It doesn't go beyond Performer 5 because Performer 5 is actually exciting while at the same time having good elements that the Cara also have. While the Cara is just genuinely safe and it's safe for not only my preference, it's safe for majority of preference. Even if you're a bass head, if you're a treble head, if you're a mid-range person, it has the tuning to satisfy pretty much a wide uh, variety of preference. Safe for a wide variety of people. Before we talk about more comparisons, let's briefly touch on the technical performance. Let's bring up my scale right here. And I would say the car lands right around 
the Aria, if not a little bit more than the Aria. Quite an average technical performance for me, and that's due to, again, every little elements of the car kind of has this kind of soft edges to them where it's not as incisive as it could be. Now, information-wise, it has a lot more information than the Aria. It displays a lot more airy nuances better than the Aria, cleaner mid-range than the Aria, better clarity in the mid-range than the Aria, but overall still falls a little bit short of the next tier. Moving on to the other comparisons. First one is Moondrop Kado. Now this one's very interesting because I like the Kara more than the Kado, which the Kado right now in my ranking list is ranked as B grade. But the Kara is not as good as Performer 5, which Performer 5 right now ranks at B plus. So for me, <laughs> I'm in a little situation where I don't know where to put the Kara. Do I put it in B plus? with Performer 5 because I like it more than the Kado? Or do I put it in B with the Kado because I don't like it as much as the Performer 5? I almost wish there was a grade in between B plus and B so I can just slot Kara right in the middle there, but there's not. So take it, you know, as you will. It could be B plus, could be B, whatever it is. But I like it more than Kado. I don't like it as much as Performer 5. And the reason I like it more than Kado is because Kado is very safe and safe in a way that is boring. The Kara is at least more exciting. It has a lot of bass. It has the air in the treble. It has more exciting elements than the Kado. And with the release of the Kara now at the same price as the Kado, I can't really recommend the Kado or I don't want to recommend the Kado to anyone anymore. The Kado has been sitting at like the bottom of the recommendation list for $200 anyways. And with the Kara now released, I wholeheartedly recommend the Kara over the Kado. In comparison to Hana 2021, I feel largely the same with the Kado comparison. I feel that the Kara is just better than the Hana 2021 in terms of excitement and also in terms of treble nuances. The Kara displays that better. Mid-range wise, the Kara is cleaner as well. The only place where the Hana 2021 beats the Kara is bass dynamics. The Hana 2021's bass is more well-defined than on the Kara, but besides that, the Kara wins in every other department. All right, final verdict time. I'll give the Kara a halfway thumbs up. For the price, it's a good IEM. It's better than the Kado. It's better than the Hana 2021. In essence, if you want a safe tuning IEM that has some exciting elements in the bass and in the treble, the Kara could be a good option. If you're looking to upgrade from Hana 2021, one or the Kado, the Kara could be a good option as well. Keep in mind, you don't want to keep both IMs in that case. So if you're upgrading from Kado or Hana to Kara, sell those two IMs first because you don't need uh, both of them. It's redundant. All right, that's it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. And I would like to thank my Patreon subscribers now. For the $9 people, we have Bard, Chadwick, K, Norm, Robert, Sunero, and $18 people, we have Dr. P, Go to 10, Kirk, Mason and Christian. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you guys want to support the channel yourself, links to Patreon is down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye.